Welcome everyone to The Simple Word. I'm your host, Emmanuel Mutui. Today I'll be talking about living in God's rest. Thank you. In the last episode, we got to lay the foundation of entering in God's rest. And I pray that we've all watched it. And if you have not watched it, please go back and watch it because it's critical to understanding this episode and the next episode. But in this episode, we'll be talking about living in God's rest or resting in God. Living in God's rest is very important because you get to live in the work of of the cross, in the work that Jesus Christ came and died for. Because remember, entering God's rest is being reunited with Him and letting Him regenerate you and letting Him equip you, letting Him pour His love in you. Now, living in that is living in what Christ did. And what Christ did, He made that possible. Amen? See, God sent His Son to die on the cross to restore what was lost in the garden. And what was lost in the garden is a partnership with the Father. See, when you're living in God's rest or resting in God, is declaring our dependence on Him. Because in the garden when man fell, we declared our independence of Him. And we said, we can do this on our own. And so we did. But it was never good enough. And that's why now, not the reason, but one of the reasons why Christ came on the earth and died. So that He can reunite us and we can be dependent on Him again. Now go with me to Hebrews chapter 4 verse 10. I want us to look at this verse that's going to be the pillar of this whole teaching. For he who entered his rest has ceased also from his work as God did from his. So that verse right there tells us that God ceased from his works. And it tells us if we enter into his rest, we cease from our works. But that's kind of contradictory. Because in 2 Thessalonians, and let's actually look at that, it tells us something different. The 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 10, look at what it says. For even when we were with you, we gave you this rule. The one who is unwilling to work shall not eat. That's very contradictory because in Thessalonians it tells us, if you, work, if you don't work, you don't eat. In Hebrews it tells us, if you enter into rest, you cease from working. And it's like, wait, so if I enter in God's rest, am I not supposed to work? Am I just supposed to be there? What? What? This is why you need the Holy Spirit. Because He will show you that's not, that's not the case. He will perfectly fit this into a perfect puzzle. That's why when you study, you must depend on Him. Because He's the only one with the answers. He's the one who wrote the book, so He should know what He meant. So let's look at this thing. What is he trying to tell us? See, what he's trying to tell us is this. When you are working, and when we are working, we can either be self-dependent or God-dependent. Because you're working in both, but who is your source? See, working in Christ versus working in the flesh is the difference between living a peaceful life or living a life of turmoil. Living a life of stress. When God ceased from creation, He stopped because He was finished. But that's not. But that doesn't mean He was done creating. Do you understand that? He was finished, but creating was not done. Look at this verse with me in Genesis chapter two, and stay with me here because I don't want to lose you. Look at what it says in Genesis two verse five. No shrub had yet appeared on the earth. And no plant had yet sprung up, for the Lord God had not sent rain on the earth, and there was no one to work the ground. So creation was done, but not all the way done, because shrubs and plants were not coming up, because no man was there to work it. What God is trying to tell us is this. God created the foundation. That was his part. Man's part was to was to till, cultivate, and develop what God had done. It was a partnership. 
God finished it. Man developed it and contained and cultivated it. Continued the work of God. In Hebrews 4, it tells God finished his work. And part of that was creating man who was going to continue in what he had finished. So our job, look at, if you go to Genesis, you'll see what God tells man. Till, cultivate, and protect this land and my creation. That was our responsibility. That is a partnership that God is trying to tell us. When he's telling us, when you enter into his rest, there's God's side and there's your side. We both have responsibilities and that's how God wanted it. God could have done all this without us. He chose to enter into rest. He chose to stop and finish so that we can do the other part. We both have our lanes. And God did not go into ours because he wanted us to have a lane. Because he wanted a partner. He didn't need it. He wanted us. We need him. He wants us. That's the difference here. A good example of this partnership is in the garden. You have God cre telling, creating everything and telling Adam, I want you to name all the animals. So what did God do? Adam did not move. He did not go looking for the animals. That was not his lane. God brought the animals to him. And Adam, who was blessed with the understanding and mind to be able to identify and name these animals by God, proceeded to do that. God could have done that so easily. But no, he wanted man to do it because that's what he, that was what he wanted. He wanted a partnership. Another example of this is Jesus and salvation. After Jesus died on the cross, he could have very easily appeared to everybody and told them, here I am, I died, look at this. And everybody would have been saved instantly. But that's not what he did. He died on the cross, went to heaven and rested and empowered us to go and spread the good news. Partnership. A good example of this is Paul. Jesus appeared to Paul so that Paul can go to others and spread the gospel. And that's why Paul says, how can people be saved if one is not sent to teach and preach this gospel? Partnership, entering and living in God's rest is living a life of partnership with Him. Understanding that He's he has his lane and you have your lane. And he will never cross and enter into our lane. But we, a lot of times, enter into his lane and try to be God of our lives. We must be faithful in our lane. We must trust him that he knows what he's doing. And when he commands us to go, we go. When he commands us to move, we move. Look at this verse in Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Through Him who strengthens me. He's the one who strengthens me to do all things. A partnership. I must believe that I can do all things through His strength. And I must expect Him to do that. To equip me. Living in God's rest is living in partnership with Christ. And Holy Spirit. Another example is Philippians 4.19. My God shall supply all my needs according to His riches in glory. He's my source. And I go out and fulfill His call. Because He's already equipped and sustained me. Partnership. I really hope you're getting this. Living in God's rest is living in partnership. Understanding that He will equip you and you walk in that out. So when He sees from work and we sees from our work, is we've ceased from being our own God and let Him and His finished work be the foundation of our work. Be the foundation of everything that we do. 
And so they're not contradicting. They're saying the exact same thing. We must work. But we must look to him who equips us and gives us everything we need to successfully work. Amen. I really pray that this message that I'm teaching right now is getting through to you and you're beginning to understand all this truth about rest. And please go out there, study some more because I am not going through everything in 10 minutes. There's so much more. So I just thank you everyone for listening. I pray you have a wonderful day or night, whatever you may be. Goodbye.